Since time immemorial, artists have given their creations to inspire, maybe even change the world. Art in all of its various forms gets us through years like 2020. Today on Context, we speak with artists who are inspired by God through their creations. Juno award-winning jazz singer Leila Bialy is here. When you hear that sound, come on down, there's a fire on. And pop culture translator David Eaton talks with Maggie John about Christian music in mainstream. The Beebs, Averill, Chance the Rapper, and sculptor Timothy Schmaltz explains his divinely inspired sculptures placed around the world, including at the Vatican. Here's Maggie John. He's a Grammy Award winning, platinum selling, New York Times best selling author, actor, and entrepreneur who uses his voice not only to rap some of the hottest lyrics in the world of hip hop, but also to bring awareness to injustice in the world. He just released a new book, I Am Restored, and a new album, Restoration. He's been in the industry for almost 20 years, of course. I'm talking about Lecrae. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so when I interviewed you over seven years ago, for the first time, I've interviewed you about five times now, uh, one of the biggest things that you were talking about is not being known as a Christian artist, but a, an artist that happens to be Christian. Do you still feel that way? You know what? Now I just I, I, I allow people to just create the, the the categories that they want to create i know my mission and my vision and um and you know you, you trying to correct people's categories or whatnot it just messes up muddies things up so whatever you want to call me call me call me a yodeler for all i care as <laughs> long as i you know you support the mission and the message that's fair that's fair you started writing <laughs> lyrics at a young age um it was your outlet in order to express yourself what does it feel like to allow the world into that personal space that you have with God? Yeah, initially it was a little difficult um, because, you know, it's a very intimate place. And um, but I, I was comfortable doing it with music for so long um, that it just became a little more natural. Um, um, obviously, you know, there, there's levels to that type of transparency. And so you, you have to, to grow into those places. And it's not for everybody to do at the same level in terms of the, the depthness of it, but um, but I but I, I I find freedom in doing it. Yeah, I know there was a time you share in your new book when you almost turned away from everything. Do you think you could ever stop rapping about your faith? No, not, not like I think even in the darkest places, um, I, I would rap about my wrestle. You know, when I made the album, all things work together. Um, I was wrestling then, but I, I, I wasn't saying I believe all things work together for the goodness of those who love him. I was saying I need to believe all things work together for the good of those who love him. And um, and restoration is the reality that that prayer came true, you know. Has music, would you say that music has saved you or has it been an added burden? Mm, it's been a little bit of both. You know, it's been a little bit of both. I think initially, early on, music was was definitely a save a, a tool for 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 keeping me uh, focused and and an outlet for me to express myself. As I've you know moved on, and the the demands of it and the pressures have created some unnecessary burdens. Yeah, how do you how do you balance that out those burdens without bringing it onto the stage? Oh man, if if I could bottle that up and, and, and find it, I'd give it to you. Uh, well, what I've learned is that there's really no balance. It's just a healthy tension. And, and you've got to be okay in that tension. I think when, when you want everything to, to roll smoothly, you're operating in the natural. Um, when, when things are a little bit rocky and tense, you, you're operating in the supernatural now because you, you need to depend on something outside of yourself. Um, and so I, I don't ever want things to be too smooth because then that's, that, that means I may be just you know, doing it in my own strength. Um, if there's a little tension, then I know I need to trust God. Yeah. 
This show, Lecrae, is about uh, God and music, artists and you know who profess their faith. And most recently, we've seen Chance the Rapper, Kanye, Justin Bieber, all singing about their faith more um, on their mainstream labels. How does, what does this say about the embrace of faith lyrics in mainstream culture, you think? Um, yeah, I, I think you, you nailed it. Um, the embrace of faith lyrics. Um, I think that for, for a long time, it was something that was kind of shunned, not kind of, it was shunned. Um, you were categorized and, and looked upon as, oh, well, you are limited to gospel or contemporary Christian, and it was not welcomed in the mainstream spaces. Of course, there's been Christians in the mainstream spaces for forever, mm -hmm. but they were not um, welcome to share. And once they did, then people kind of pushed them aside and said, oh, you're, you're now a gospel artist or you're now a CCM artist. And so um, I, I'm grateful that, that artists feel that freedom, and I think that it'll bring some awareness to the culture uh, about who God is. Yeah. You write in your new book, I'm Restored, How I Lost My Religion But Found My Faith, that you would get criticized for, from your fans for collaborating with secular artists. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that people want you to stay in kind of the boxes and the categories that, that make sense to them. Um, not realizing that some of the things that you're trying to do um, are something that you feel like God has led you to do. I, I think about Moses and, um, and and him saying, God told me to, to go and let set these people free. And, and all the Israelites saying, man, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? Like, are you serious right now? Why did you bring us out to this desert? What is going on right now? And not, not saying I'm Moses, but just saying that Moses was following his convictions. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think sometimes you, you have to be okay with following your convictions, even though you face criticism over doing it. Yeah. Do you think there's a hypocrisy there because you're, you're criticized for singing or performing with secular artists, but secular artists can step into that faith world? Oh, there's, there's hypocrisy all over the place. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, that just goes without saying. You know, we, we as human beings, we're just not very good at consistency or nuance. That's just a tough thing for us. We like everything nice and neat, meat, do not touch the vegetables. Just, you know, keep it nice and orderly. And when it gets messy, uh, we get a little, like, freaked out. So, um, of course, we, we want to see people uh, come over to our side of the table because it means, oh, maybe they want to know the Lord. But, um, but, but rarely do we... Uh, I have a picture of someone going over to the other side of the table. There's just a fear that, oh, if you go over there, then you're just going to become, you're, you're never coming back. Yeah, you can't, you can't please everybody. Uh, you signed with Columbia Records um, a while back, and you talk about being in a club, sitting at an after party with Kevin Hart, um, but also just feeling this emptiness inside. Your, your song is playing, Blessings is playing in the club. You know, you're at the top of your career and there's this emptiness. Explain that emptiness and how do you grapple with that when you're at the top of, of your career? Oh man, um, you know, it's, it's something that you just don't anticipate. You know, you, you, you hear it time and time again. Artists say, man, I, I got all this way and, and this is it, um, or there's nothing there. It's just the same and you hear that, but um, until you experience it, I think you don't realize that they're, they're telling the truth. So listen to me now, kids. There's nothing on the other side of the top. Uh, um, behind all the fame and the fortune and the accolades, you still have to deal with you. Mm -hmm. And um, and 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 God is 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 still the same, um, regardless of what happens around you. You know, it doesn't add anything to your uh, relationship with God or to your stability mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Awesome. Well, Grammy Award winning artist Lecrae, thank you for sharing your time with us today. Be sure to download Lecrae's latest album, Restoration, and do pick up his latest book, I Am Restored, wherever books are sold. And there's more on our website, context.show. Thanks again, Lecrae. Thank you. Appreciate it. It takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for an artist to actually make a living from their art with no guarantees of success or recognition. And here in Canada, it's even more difficult. Well, Context executive producer Susan Ponting now with Canadian singer-songwriter Lila Bialy on how her faith shapes her incredibly successful career in jazz music.
And the Juno Award for Vocal Jazz Album of the Year goes to Lila Bialy. Revival at the beginning of March, just before pandemic hit. Like there were people there who already had cases, but you know, news hadn't, it hadn't yet really broken in the news. So there we were, all of us packed in in the streets, dancing and I love you know, though that not in thinking that, anything of it. It's just, social justice issues are really important to you because you reference Greta Thunberg. Yeah. Cleverly. A girl from Sweden, breaking through the apples. The director we worked with, she lives in Brooklyn, she found that little girl. And then when she arrived on set with her mom, who was in the video, we discovered that she, she had gotten into dance, this little girl, um, as a way to counter the effects of bullying at school. And we were like, you are perfect, perfect. for this video. Yeah. I want to ask you, how are you coping with COVID? Really, as a mom, as a yeah. wife, as a singer, yeah. songwriter, musician? I think in the early days, there's the initial shock and, you know, adjusting. Um, and you kind of, you go with it because there's nothing else you can do. Mm -hmm. But there is a sense of, okay, there's got to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It has to be closer than we think. And, you know, and sure enough, we saw various uh, cities across the country moving into stage from stage one lockdown to stage two and ultimately stage three. We even traveled west and I'm yes, from Vancouver. So we, right. we took a flight out. We were extra careful. We quarantined for two weeks before we saw folks, but we played some safe concerts. We go out on Monday night. It doesn't matter if the mood day right. It doesn't stop you from winning awards. And <laughs> Being on every, you're everywhere on social media. You've got amazing, huge fan base. Thank you. I mean, we, you know, I don't take it lightly. And 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 every time, like, if something comes my way, whether it's the, the Juno or the most recently the SoCan, and it has been a complete surprise, you know. So I don't take it for granted. And I have to, I have to remind myself that. You know, I do what I do as a musician because I feel called to be a musician in the world, not not for the accolades and certainly, of course, yes. certainly not for the travel or fame because that's sort of a relative term anyway for someone who's in jazz. Yes. <laughs> Although your jazz kind of yeah. goes yeah. over. Yeah. You got it. Just yeah. Sugar because I'm also tired. Sugar because I'm uninspired. So as an artist, as a singer, songwriter, yeah. is it um, everything to you to give your art to God? It is important for me to always be checking in on a faith level because um, it is easy to get distracted by all the other things that surround a life in the entertainment industry. And, um, and it's hard. Like, it's hard. It's a merciless business. It is. And especially for a woman, I think, like a you know a woman who's getting old, getting on in years, and and um, and so you know, I think that that inner driving force, which comes from comes from without and comes from within, right, um, and has been there now for decades as as my faith has grown over the years, that's what I have to return to time and time again for refreshment and to persevere. Otherwise, I would have given up men many times over. Many times over. Mm -hmm. When the winter boldly strains, take a day off. Would you recommend this business to your son? I think my short answer would be no, but um, we actually, he's 10 now, and we've found ways to integrate him into our sets. And we actually wrote a song for my latest record called Take the Day Off, which was this little idea that he came up with one day, because there's music, you know, instruments everywhere. And so he just picked it up and started playing, and I, and I recorded it and then built a song out of it. But um, when left to his own devices, he really seems to want to be in, in the fold. Well, it's in his DNA. It's in his DNA, like it or not. Ben and I met in a band, you know? <laughs> That's right. He was the drummer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I look to the scriptures for poetic truth, um, as well as the sort of historical stuff I'm, I'm, I'm in, interested in. And of course, there was a hist historical Jesus. No, I'm talking about God. Oh, right. And, and do well, you I see, I, the, per the person of Christ is my way to understand uh, God. Do you pray? Yes. To whom or what do you pray? To and Christ. In what way? To Christ. Yeah. And, and what do you pray for? I pray to get to know um, <laughs> the will of God, because then the prayers have more chance of coming true. His work is in places like the Vatican and is known around the world. Canadian Tim Schmaltz joins us to talk about his art and inspiration. And the culture translator David Eaton joins us from Colorado to talk about the latest Christian musicians who are infiltrating mainstream music. That's coming up. I still think that God means everything to, to everyone, whether they understand it or not, or can really see for themselves where they find, you know, God. Um, but I don't necessarily, I, I know for a fact that, you know, we're not uh, pushed or promoted to, to, to speak about God with fervor, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's anything that um, really allows us to do it as so. But I think the new generation and, mm. the, and the forward is, is all about freedom and all about the ability to do what we want. And, you know, we're not free unless we can talk about God. That was Chance the Rapper. We are not free unless we can openly talk about God, especially in music. Well, our next guest says he is devoted to creating artwork that glorifies Christ. He is a figurative artist whose pieces have been installed around the world, one in the Vatican where the homeless Jesus and angels unawares are. Tim Schmaltz, welcome to the program. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. So Tim, you say that in order to create epic art, you need an epic subject. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I, I learned that early on in my career that um, your artwork is as, only as good as, as what you're representing. And so, for instance, if you take the Sistine Chapel, one of the most beautiful masterpieces in the world, and you change the subject matter from the creation of, of the universe to, um, say, a picnic in France, it could be the same skill, the same, the same uh, technical uh, ability, the same ceiling, but it would fall flat. You need to have an amazing subject to have a, an, an amazing piece of artwork. Yeah, well said. Well, St. Gregory the Great wrote that art is for the illiterate. How do you use your artwork and sculptures to educate people? Well, I think that's, that's, that's an amazing quotation because I oftentimes uh, uh, basically believe that um, people don't have enough time to read or write in our culture today. What artwork, what visual artwork does is it allows people to get this instant, almost visual bite and kind of intrigue them to, to investigate and to, and to study more. And so oftentimes I think artwork is a gateway, an introduction, and it's also a, a reminder of some of the deeper spiritual things in our life. And how do you see yourself through your art? You like to be influential for the younger generation to be able to approach their faith differently. How do you see yourself through that? Well, I see myself as a, a unique form of preaching in a sense. And I, I think that's what, that's what uh, Christian sculpture can be. And I think that in today's culture, we need, we need to have that new creativity and that new presentation of these eternal truths. And, uh, and so hopefully when, when people look at my sculpture, they will think that we can be creative in expressing uh, the gospels ourselves in a unique way too. Some have said that your sculptures are a type of movement, um, not just sculptures. Do you see your artwork as your voice and a change or a tool for change? Well, I think it possibly could be um, interpreted that um, my sculpture is a change in the sense that what I like to do is I, I, I like to consider artwork, my sculpture, as a visual ambassador to our faith. And what I see uh, 
in uh, Christianity is something that's really hardcore. So what are you working on now, Tim? Can you give us a sneak peek? Oh, what I'm working on now is one of my most challenging sculptures. It's a sculpture that's very close to being done called from Isaiah 58, Let the Oppressed Go Free. And what it is, is it's a sculpture about human trafficking. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a slave from a, a, another century, St. Josephine Bakita, is opening up the ground and hundreds of modern day contemporary slaves, human trafficked people are being released. And it's dynamic. The idea um, came about with, uh, with the idea of, of creating awareness of human trafficking. Pope Francis said that human trafficking will always exist if it's kept invisible and underground. So what my sculpture is bringing that visibility and actually bringing these oppressed people out from under the ground up to the surface. So it's a big, big project. Well, thank you so much for using your voice in that way. Again, sculptor and artist, Tim Schmoltz, thanks for sharing today. Thank you. How did you decide to actually move within the guidelines and how did you find yourself away from, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I'm going to drink or do drugs or sleep around or what, all these other distractions. How did you get out of that world? What was the turning point for you? I think it was my perception of who Jesus really was, you know? Um, I'd had really bad examples of Christians in my life uh, who would say one thing and do another. So they were the, my direct example of who Jesus was. That's why you didn't take it seriously. I didn't take it as seriously because I didn't have good example good role models. They, yeah the way i look at my relationship with god and with jesus is i'm not trying to earn god's love by doing good things god has already loved me for who i am to colorado next and a very different discussion with culture translator david eaton about god and music does Christian music have a stigma attached to it? That's coming up next. Our next guest, David Eaton, studies pop culture and has watched the evolution of Christian music over the years. I like to call him the culture translator. Thanks for joining us today, David. It's good to be on. So we've seen uh, mainstream artists sing songs about their faith for many years. What is it about people like Kanye West choosing to release Jesus is King uh, that every has everybody talking? Okay, Maggie, how many times have you listened to the Jesus is King album? Uh, a number of times. I would say probably over 30. Yeah, me too. It's a great album. And I think we're all talking about it because it's, it's one, it's well done. And it shows transformation in his life. His previous album was Kids See Ghost. And it was, it was bad. I mean, it was, it was quality, but the content was awful. And so here you see a man who comes in contact with the kindness of God, um, seeks forgiveness and he has a, a repentance and transformation it's awesome and when he had that previous album and also before that he was uh, the world's biggest pornography site he was the creative director for their first awards show and so when you see someone's life turn around and where he's actually speaking out against pornography and trying hard to stop the habit it's amazing so i think that's what got everyone's attention and I mean, when you hear the song, Wash Us, Wash Us in the Blood, um, one of his recent singles, man, it's really strong work. Yeah, just don't check out his latest tweets, but we <laughs> will stick on <off> Jesus <laughs> is King. Also, you know, we've seen the Beebs, Avril Lavigne, Chance have all had songs of faith based lyrics on the charts. Is it easier for mainstream artists to cross over with a song here or there than it is to go the other way around, meaning a Christian artist putting out a secular song? Yeah, I think uh, when secular sings songs about God, it's extremely brave. We'll just put it that way. And Kanye, one of his lyrics, he says that Christians will be the first one to judge you. And so I would say when you look at the song Holy, that is by Justin Bieber, that is featuring Chance the Rapper. I mean, Justin goes to church now. He leads worship sometimes. He's married. And his songs, even the songs Holy is very sexual, but it's kind of like, marriage sexual maybe and you can you can look at it that way if you watch music video i mean chance talks about smoking weed 
Uh, but he hasn't smoked weed since 2016 or the couple in the video, you know, you're, I'm crying when I'm watching it. They don't have, they don't have rings on. And so you're, I think as when we think about Christian music and we think about songs about faith, we're quick to put some people on the pedestal right. and not realize that, Hey, they're on a journey too. And we can chew up the meat, spit out the bones. We can think critically and think wisely about it. And even as the Bible, the biggest book in the Bible is a book of music and poetry Psalms. And the very first Psalm tells us how we're to enjoy music. And it said, it says, blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. So you always have to say, hey, how's this song counseling me? And so when it comes to music like Holy, you can see, hey, it's maybe it's counseling people to stick together when they're going through a hard time. Or, you know, it's just putting that conversation forward. And so I think the danger is we see something, we try to put someone on a pedestal, and we can't wait to watch them fail. And that's just not fair to them. That's such a good point. We tend to put people on pedestals instead of just seeing them as people who are fallen like all of us. Now, I want to know, is do you think that there's a stigma that comes with Christian music? Uh, yes, <laughs> but uh, I don't believe there's such a thing as Christian music. Okay. Because I think um, I think Christian is an awesome noun, so for a person, and it's a terrible adjective. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have, you know, are are you a Christian TV talk show person? You know, am I am I a Christian? You know, whatever that puts Christian as the adjective instead of who the person actually does and who they actually are. And so, and I think the stigma has to do with money. Is who buys. Christian music. And the person who buys Christian music, I was talking to a, a Christian music executive. They actually have a name for this person. Her name is Becky. She's mid forties, drives a minivan, has been divorced and remarried, goes to church twice a week, has a handful of kids, and she still buys CDs and she still listens to Christian radio. Mm. So if you want your 17 year old son to like Christian music <laughs> and that your son is not a 40 year old mom, he's not going to like it because it's not made for him. Yeah. What is it about Christian music or just music about faith that can stir people or move people? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about something that's core to us. And I find myself frequently crying mm. whenever I come across a movie or a song that talks about forgiveness. And so when you see the transformation that comes from forgiveness, it just is really moving. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about that we're supposed to love God. The great commandment is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I would put in front of you that music is one of those things that could combine those four different areas in a most powerful way. So whenever it's done right and we feel it all the way into our bones, that's what gives music its power. Yeah, so well said. Again, thank you, David Eaton, president and co-founder of Axis and AKA The Culture Translator. Thank you so much for joining us today, friend. Of course. And thanks for being part of the conversation. Plenty more at our website. For all of us here at Context, thanks for watching. Bye.